Hey guys, today we're checking in with kind of a new, kind of a different thing as far as the bone tactical theme goes. Something not quite what I would normally do every day, but we're talking docks, we're talking seawalls, and we're going to talk about a problem that Florida is having with some of the companies that have maybe not installed properly some uh, docks and seawalls. Maybe they haven't wrapped the pilings with plastic as they should, and they're just installing wood pilings. And a lot of the areas like where I'm at right here in, in Bradenton, Florida, have kind of an issue with a small mite or boar, <clears throat> a small animal that's in the water that kind of works its way into the wood and eats it and destroys the piling. So if they haven't been properly wrapped, they'll be destroyed. We are now going to work with a company that has a cure for that, 100% fix, and you don't have to completely rebuild your dock. They can come in and, and do the work themselves, and they can they can kind of fix that problem. They've got a, a cure. It's cheap. It's effective. It's supposed to last 100 years. So I'm going to take you through the whole process right now. I'll show you here in a second the Snapjacket product. Snapjacket's going to help us out and fix it. Mariner Dock and Seawall, a much more professional company, uh, somebody I've had a lot more respect for and a lot better experience with so far. They've, up to this point, they've serviced our boat lift here be, that you can see behind me. They've done some work for us already. They've cleaned the dock that they are going to install the snap jackets. Let me show you real quick how they're delivered and then I'll take you through the full process. I'll also, at the end of this video, give you a full description in detail, in-depth description about what actually the snap jackets are and what actually the snap jackets do in a little bit more full detail. But let's get going and show you a little bit more. Here's the snap jackets as they were delivered the other day. They're these big plastic tubes that kind of snap around the pilings. And basically, they open here, they'll snap around, all right? They're available in some different colors and once you snap them around the damaged pilings, you fill the inside with concrete, and then they're good to go for about 100 years. That's the basic gist of it. Let's get right into the construction process. Now we're gonna sink it from here to here. We're gonna be about three inches under the header, so it's gonna be down about a foot. It's gonna blast the whole ground. It's gonna push it down from the top. So now they've got all the snap jackets cut here to size for each piling. They just put them over there, shove them down, what, about a foot into the sediment? Yep. About a foot into the sediment. They're using the pressure washer here. So they can dig out a little bit of underneath. If there's some rocks or some stuff, they'll blow it out from underneath. Concrete will be pumped in from the top. They've got a little sleeve locking system that slides in there. And putting that in right now and then it'll be ready to be filled with concrete. Yep, okay. Ready for concrete.
these ones that have conduit in them, any kind of tubing or PVC pipes that are ran down the side of the piling, they're they're pouring in fast set concrete to make sure when they pour the rest of the concrete that it doesn't leak out of the bottom. What's the set time on this fast set? 30 seconds. Really? That's awesome. So it's super fast. This is an example of one that's already all the way topped off to the top. Then the next will be the coning process. And here's one of the last ones that hasn't been topped off yet. They poured the concrete yesterday, as you guys saw, and these are most of the way full. They pumped it in with a concrete truck. And now just adding the very top little section of the top off, which is gonna allow them to cone it after this. Yep. It acts as a waterproofing. Okay. So that'll keep water from sinking down in, into the concrete and ruining getting right. in between the wood and the concrete? Correct. Exactly. All right, cool. This concrete is poor. It was sucking in water. Okie dokie. It's and like the, people, when you see their stucco falling up their house, it's because they don't have a good watertight paint. Oh, and this is a watertight concrete, basically. Cool. And that's the final cone, and then that's what it'll look like right there permanently. Yep. Alrighty. There we are, snap jackets installed and ready to go. Hey guys, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the snap jacket from Shoreline Plastics today. Why you might need this snap jacket product, what it does, and really how it entered the market as a game changer. So, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. First, let me say that they sent me this product for free but I am not paid, this is not a paid endorsement, they didn't pay me any money to put this out there. Even if they had paid me, you're gonna get an honest opinion from me, you're gonna get the truth. All my reviews are always up front, above board, and 100% honest, okay guys? So, let me get right into it. This is basically a plastic sleeve that goes around something like PVC that goes around a piling. Why would you need that? Pilings, you guys may have seen the classic hourglass looking piling of some old docks of some wood. You've got boring clams and different kinds of waterborne termite type animals that exist in pretty much any body of water that can eat away and actually destroy wood that's in any, you know, almost any type of water. It can be destroyed. Uh, wood that exists in almost any type of water. So, it's not a good idea to build a dock with just wood pilings. Some companies that don't do good work will build a dock for you, like this one was built. We talked about earlier in the video that we're having this problem after a relatively young dock because, well, the job just really wasn't done properly. But thank goodness Shoreline Plastics has developed the snap jacket, which basically is just it's a fix for that, okay? so. What it does is it's it's a PVC or plastic outside piece of, uh, just a piece of plastic, a tube, okay? And it's gonna be a larger diameter than your piling. It goes 10 to 12 inches down into the seabed or into the, into the earth that's beneath the water level. And you just pump in concrete. There's a small, which you've seen by this point in the video, there's a small lip and then a sleeve that slides down in there and holds it all together. 
And the plastic doesn't have to be super tough. It doesn't have to be super thick. It doesn't even have to be complex, guys. It's simple, and simple designs always work best. In engineering, you don't want a lot of moving parts. You don't want a lot of stuff that can break. And this is just about as simple as it gets. It's a sleeve. You, you, you put it around the piling. You slide the, the connector onto it. You shimmy it down into the ground. If you have to, you jet it a little bit with a pressure washer or a pump. Get it down in there into the ground 10 to 12 inches below the natural level of the earth that's below the water there. And then at that point, you just pump in concrete. We had to use some fast set concrete for some of the things that had, you know, conduit and stuff like that running through them. But at the end of the day, it's, it's concrete of one type or another. You fill it up with concrete. And what that does is the concrete itself becomes your new piling. It fossilizes any kind of crustaceans or any animals that are inside of there. And it pre prevents any more animals from getting inside of there. So the low tide level and the high tide level are usually in between those areas. Is, is those areas and then in between is where you have issues with that. So that's where you want to go above the water line and then below where the water and the earth actually goes down. So you, you got the whole entire thing protected. And basically, once you pump in that concrete and the concrete dries, you cone it off at the top with a little bit of waterproof concrete so water doesn't pool or get inside of there because normal concrete is actually not 100% waterproof. So they use a waterproof concrete to cone it off at the top. At this point, you've seen the entire process. It's very easy, very simple, and it's done. So this dock theoretically should last lifetimes, generations. We'll see. I'm happy with it. They look like it looks like they did a good job. The wood that's nine years old, approximately, at the upper level here that you can see behind me is still in amazing condition. the The wood that was below the water line was beginning to to be damaged and removed by these boring clams that I told you about. So now we've got concrete base and the wood up top, which the wood up top is is pressure treated and and will last a long time. And now the concrete on the bottom should ideally last forever. You can see around me. And, and below where the Snap Jackets themselves are. So I just wanna again, give a thanks to Snap Jacket. Uh, also give a shout out to Mariner, Dock and Seawall. They did the job out here. They came out and, and were willing to work with us for this video, so. Guys, let me know questions, comments below. Let me know what you think about the new dock. Let me know if you wanna go out with me on the boat. Comment below. Maybe I'll take one of you guys out fishing. Bone out.